Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today it's the next update with our latest project, the BMW 1M. Now, as you know, I bought this car a couple of weeks ago with the idea in mind to do something like what we did with the Clio V6, OEM Plus, if you will. But this particular example of the 1 Series M Coupe happens to be a very high mileage one. It's almost 100,000 miles, about 150,000 kilometers, but all with one single owner. Now, we took it over to Evolve to pop it up on the ramps and do an inspection and it turns out it's been really well looked after we will of course need to do some servicing the diff is playing up we'll have to change a few of the liquids we're going to be doing plenty of upgrades as well to come but the first of those we're going to crack on with today something i've bought here that i mentioned a few times which is to fit a new infotainment system with android auto and apple carplay to replace the storage bin on the dashboard so i've just bought this we've got all of the things with it and we're going to try and get this fitted today i'll just show you quickly inside here exactly how it's going to go so e80 series or e82 in the case of this one series models could either have a completely flat dash you could opt to have this storage bin just a small little cubby here or you could have the iDrive system which obviously by modern standards would be really out of date you could fit an android auto screen here but i've gone for the one up on the dash wireless android auto available and i think it's going to be a pretty welcome upgrade to this little beastie to get us started. Now, hopefully, with everything we've got over here, all of our DeWalt drivers, lights, and different tools that we have, pickers, trim tools, I'm gonna to be able to do most of this with a bit of help, probably today, but it throws me back because when I owned a 123D Coupe originally, also the E82, of course, which was part of the reason for buying this car. Remember, I went from original Clio to Clio V6, hence we've gone from my second car, my second car here in the UK, which was the Diesel 1 Series, into the ultimate being the 1M. Back when I had that, and I was young and had no idea what I was doing, I tried to install a Parrot Bluetooth system into the car. I did actually install the system, it just took me a long time and a lot of fiddling around with. So hopefully this is gonna be a little bit easier to get cracking on and work out all of this different stuff. So let's have a quick run through of what we got, get peeling this apart, pulling off the different trims and get this installed into the 1M. Before we get completely into this, received the parcel just now, the courier's just dropped it off. We've got this screen, which will be installed into the dashboard. You've got various clips to hold it in place. That, in theory, is its own tablet, or you can also set it up, obviously, for connecting to your phone, which you kind of want these days anyway. We also have a big old wiring loom here, which is gonna be interesting to try and fit and install. Or maybe you only need parts of it. I suspect you only need parts of the cables rather than the whole thing. And we have a reversing camera. This actually comes around and goes on the normal boot button release. So just literally under here, in place of that, nice and easy, the wiring is gonna be the nightmare part of that. We'll see if we're gonna be able to get that wiring loom installed. Um, on paper, this isn't too complicated. These instructions are super simple and for the F21 rather than the E series, but we're probably gonna manage. I say, we're hopefully gonna manage. Wish us luck. Before I attack the dashboard in here and start having a go at pulling out some of these panels, hopefully without getting it all wrong, I'd like to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Carly. Now I've used the Carly scanner on a number of cars before. This connects to your car's OBD port. So all modern cars will have one of these available. And then via Bluetooth with your phone on the app, you can read out all sorts of health and diagnostics information, fault codes. You can code different elements of the vehicle with certain manufacturers and specific cars as well, which I'm gonna demonstrate for you in a moment. But this plugs in to the OBD port, which BMWs have had for two or three decades or so, just down there. Grab the key, and I apologize in advance because it's a BMW it's probably going to chime away at us no end in just a moment but turn on the ignition grab the phone which we can then open the Carly app inside here this can connect to the car so we've got the BMW 1 Series 1 Coupe the E82 from 2011 you can bring up all sorts of live data and information as well you can see the mileage and information being read out of the ECU connect to it we'll go through the motions here it will load up connect through Bluetooth and when this is in we can start digging into things 
Now in here that it's connected, of course the OBD plug is inside the car, we've got diagnostics, used car check, customization and other features. If you have the premium package for an annual license fee, that's where you get access to manufacturer level diagnostics, along with even more coding access to be able to configure things. Like for example, you can change the lighting of the angel eyes on the headlights, you can change whether the mirrors will auto fold, you can have chimes, it depends on the specific car what you have access to. So let's go into the coding here, connect this and see what coding possibilities we have on the 1M. Now that we're connected to the ECUs in the car, we've got a whole host of different things that we can change and that we can access. For example, going into the light and mirrors, if we read out the module, that's when we can start playing with this stuff. As part of the process, a backup is taken of the ECU. We then have our list of different things that you're able to play around with. So in here, for example, we have all sorts of different flashes and signals and brightnesses and lights. The hazard lights, this is quite fun. You can set it to a double light to double blink the hazards or of course pop it back to standard. We also have, if we scroll a little bit further down, the angel eyes. So with the angel eyes, you can change the brightness. So the standing lights, you can either have them off completely or you can go very high, very bright, should you wish. And then finally, the other thing to just take a quick look at right now is what you can do with the mirrors. So comfort folding for side view mirrors. If you turn this on, the mirrors will then automatically fold when you lock the car. All of these things, just a small touch of what you've got in here, all controllable through Carly's app. Mission success with the Carly scanner and you can get 15% off until the 31st of August with the code SHMI150. So what are you waiting for? The information is down below. Click the link to unlock hidden features with your car using the Carly scanner. For now, let me give this a go. I might have cheated a little bit that I know what to do for the first parts of this, but then it's probably going to go completely wrong. Anyway, we are armed with our DeWalt tools. We have the impact driver. We've got some lights as well because it's definitely in need of that in here. Pretty dark. Plus, we've got the picks, the trim tools and a little tray for all of the screws that are going to be coming out of this. Now, we have the storage bucket up here, exactly as I had in my old One Series Coupe as it happened. And I mentioned in the earlier videos that this is a bit scuffed. It's got a few marks. So we're going to be getting rid of this first, which means pulling out that rubber trim inside and then using the extension because it's slightly awkward and fiddly inside here. We will pop that in. This is going to be needed. Turn on the light to just release these screws at the back. That's not going to be all to get this off, but that is going to be the start of it. So we'll get that out. I think for this one, I need to go in that way around just to be able to access closely enough to it. There we go. That is out. Then this is the slightly more tricky part, the trim tool to remove the air conditioning vents up top. And there are four little clips here and it's a bit fiddly and it requires kind of just some force to basically get in there and pry it out and hopefully remove it from the top and then the bottom will follow afterwards. So fingers crossed, I can release this. I've heard some of the clips go. Let me close that down at the top. See if we can get in there. There we go. Give that a bit of a pull. It's not the most simple thing in the world. Pop the trim tool down here. And then in this, there is a very fiddly cable holding it in place. And the way to get this out it's kind of just a bit of prying backwards and forwards and hoping that it will release. Not, like I said, the easiest thing in the world to do, but in theory, there we go, we've got it. So we've got our air conditioning vents off. Then we've got two more screws in here. Again, same setup. Let's try not to drop them, but use the light. This is very helpful on the tools, it has to be said. Are we in there? There we go. Hopefully I'm going to be able to pull that out. No, it's kind of stayed in place for the moment. I'm going to leave that just for the second. Big trick with all of this. That's a little bit fiddlier. There we go. Released. Is to make sure that you pull all of this stuff in something, put all of this stuff in something magnetic so they're not going to get lost. And also to make sure when we're putting it back together that everything that comes off goes back somewhere. In theory then, yeah, easy. Bye-bye one series storage bin. That, in theory, is not needed again. With that out, next up is to remove the climate control, which I believe the whole thing should come out in one. If we just private prize it from here, maybe something like this. Here we go, that's starting to move. Same on the other side. Try and get this in, get the whole piece to come out. There we go, not just the fascia from there. Pull this out 
quite sure what happens down below. Must be some more clips in here. And we can access, there's quite an empty space behind there. This reminds me of the old days. This is exactly what I did with my original one to get the Bluetooth in it. A little reposition, that kind of tray from underneath is removed. We've got a couple of clips that we've taken out. These cables on the back, you kind of flip over the top part, they release, same on that side. And then once I've pulled this away and managed to get that out, oh, come on, there we go. That means we can pop this again to the side, out the way, because we are next, actually now, watch out, able to access inside here. Let's get to the back of the head unit. After removing a couple of screws that hold it at the bottom, this should now slide out, straight forwards and out. Gosh, I don't remember it being so easy back when I was trying to do this and had no idea what was going on. So let me work out what space we need and where I can delicately place this to be able to access the right cabling behind. Now we're taking these off. So that means this first one, apologies, hand completely blocking the, the view, but that first one out. That I think slides up, yep. And then does that just come out as well? Which way? Not entirely sure. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Maybe, maybe not. Not sure which bit comes out, there we go. And then the full wiring harness from here. I think we clip this up and that releases and we're out. So that's probably the last thing to remove before we need to go and get some cabling and work out what's going back in. I have been to get the new harness and there's a car alarm going off in the background, which is a truck outside, which has nothing to do with us. So there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Anyway, this connects onto the existing harness, which I guess means we plug that in there and then latch it together. Right, that seems to be roughly right. But there are a lot of cables, because I also have this other bag of cables. And this is before you get to the reversing camera cables. Uh, that's definitely an antenna and some video leads and some USB leads. Okay, we've got a lot to work out. Let me read for a minute. A little bit of fiddling around later. We've got this extra wiring loom in place. These are the optical cables, which are for the sound, which have been moved ever so slightly. We've got everything in theory, just released a little by cutting some of the soft tape that's been in here. But I think we should now be able to connect these three parts back on. So we've got this clamp obviously on the back. We want to open that up as much as possible to get this in and get a secure and good fit. Make sure that's in and lock it down. That seems good. Then we've got this one back in here. Sorry, it's all immensely fiddly with this. And then lastly is that one. Not yet ready to root in all of the cables, but that all feels like it's in a pretty good place. And then underneath it, sorry for the lack of light, we've got our wiring loom that we're gonna be wiring through. And then we've got the additional leads that go into the climate control panel. Now it's time to test the screen. There are a lot of ancillary cables around here for all sorts of different things, like USB ports, which we're gonna try and put in the glove box, hence why that's down. And then you have the 4G antenna, you have the GPS antenna, you have the reversing camera cable, but step one is to plug this in and just see if it's gonna turn on. And in theory, that's gonna sit there obviously once everything is fully in place but before we get to kind of removing the screen protector and all of that that needs to plug in to the top of it so i need to work out exactly which way around it goes so that way or that way i can't quite tell from here and then figure out how to get it into this because this is very 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 fiddly i think it must be the other way around i can't really see what i'm doing here at all with the light but that goes in there somehow. And that is now clipped in place. So obviously this is not final fitment, but we can for the moment, watching out for all of these cables. That's one of the important things here. But where are we gonna go? We're gonna go behind that way, drop this down and just loosely see what it looks like there. There we go, screen on the dash. I actually thought it was gonna be more imposing than that. I thought it would obscure more of the view. I guess we're gonna test it in a second. Well, that's probably going to ping errors because obviously things like this are all unplugged. This hasn't yet been wired back in, although that should be fairly simple. We just need to see what else goes in first. I've got the key. This is the test. So power it up. Wait a second. BMW does its beeping thing. Oh, look, we've got the screen on. Functioning. So this actually has built in I think nav and sim and stuff but obviously my primary purpose here is android auto or apple carplay so that's definitely the direction i'm going um 
this is actually booting, which is mission success, almost. Just got a whole mess of other stuff. And to figure out whether we're going to put the reversing camera in. This is, yeah, we're live. I guess not doing too badly. Um, wow. Nice. It looks like an iDrive system. That's cool. That's really cool. Huh. Widgets and all sorts. We're just going to pop off this trim on the dash. Um, Brad is doing this, by the way. <laughs> He's been holding the camera, but basically to get a little bit more access because this is the reversing camera cable and the USB cables are here as well. Um, and hopefully this is going to make it possible to get a little bit more access behind. We have managed to get this USB cable coming up through a hole here, up in towards the air conditioning vent area. Now it can go through into this cubby and then that can plug into there. And in theory, we've got those two USB ports active. Now you could have them in different locations, of course, that clicked in, but we're just gonna have both in the glove box for now at least. Are they labeled USB 2, USB, I don't even know. But those are in there. We're probably going to route the reversing camera cable through the passenger side the same way, because it's also got this here. Uh, it's just a case of figuring out then how it's going to go out that side around the door frame and somehow end up in the back. I had to pop away for a minute, but look at this progress. Brad has been working on routing the cable for the camera. So that's now tied together properly. Some cable strippers to just link it together in there. It tucks out behind the glove box, runs under the door strip. Obviously it's out here at the moment because this is going to be fed behind or through the seats here towards the boot where it will then have to be run through this loom. We'll have to get this trim piece off because obviously it's going to be going up there. Now that's gonna require trim tool to pop all of these off to take off this piece of carpeting up here and then we'll figure out how to get it running through the back definitely not the easiest task in the world it does take a little bit of time but we are making some nice progress with this <laughs> we have a rear seat bench out nice one meanwhile i'm working on pulling all of these poppers out it's a little bit of a trick to this obviously you have to kind of latch up just the outside edge you need two hands really for it and then pull each one of them off to be able to remove that um, and obviously we're going to be able to come through here somehow. This is where <laughs> you're working away at something and then you realize you're doing it completely wrong. We were like, how do you access the boot release? Like this is double skin. There's nowhere through. And then it was, maybe it's these, but then starting to loosen those, those were kind of for the third brake light, the upper brake light. So it was like, this, this doesn't work. We're missing a trick here. There's nothing obvious as to how that actually connects or disconnects and then check the video. And a video obviously said that you just use a pry tool, a trim tool, and that pops out. Super easy. I told you it was going to get harder a little bit later on. We're not at final installation, but the cables back there are plugged in. The camera is pointing up towards the roof, and we're going to see if this is working. So, step in here. I'm going to have a whole load of beeps again. Just turn it on for a moment. Try and get the system live. And I think as soon as I go into reverse, it should show me correctly. Don't touch the pedals, engine off. We don't want to start it right now. But in theory, if I go into reverse, got parking sensors, we've got the camera, we can see the sky. No, well, technically the ceiling of the museum. And that is a very OEM BMW look. Success. I suspected that was going to throw us some curveballs, but that seems to have worked fine. So now we can come and tidy it up a bit. The reassembly process, we've popped this back on, all of these poppers, well, the hard ones to get off with these because they're kind of indented. Um, the warning triangle snaps back there. Now, in a dream world, the cable would be routed from there through here, through this um, seal. Unfortunately, the plug on the end of it, which you now can't see, is too big to get through that. So we might adjust this down the line. Maybe. 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 For now, it's just going down the other side tidily kind of here that's okay for the time being not a permanent solution and then it's a case of reassembling everything in there we're not far to go actually we're not far this is good a quick progress update because the microphone was not on but we now have the rear seat the bench back in place things like the seat belt plugs you need to make sure those are the right way around which we've managed to sort out this kind of just clicks back down so everything there is as it should be on the door seal on the passenger side have to watch out because the rubber actually goes beneath the plastic bit and for some reason it had popped out on this side as well but we've now got that back in so that is all as it should be 
Then we've got the glove box, that's in place. We've got the USB cables, which are just kind of dangling in there, but that's fine for the moment because the new system is all wireless. We're gonna have the trim panel back here, but that'll be the last thing after the air vents, after this, which is then with all of the spaghetti junction that we've got to sort out here, but we are not far away now. This is all coming back together. We are quickly going back together. We've put in the head unit, and now the first of the screws to hold that in, that is in. Second one, this is where you've got to remember which screw is which. We have a couple that are slightly smaller than the others, but the cables underneath all of this were obviously a bit of a nightmare. But now we're hopefully going to have all of this right. We just need to do something to make sure this isn't going to be rattling around. We'll figure that out and then we'll put the uh, AC panel back over the front of it. We're up to this, which means we've got to plug this in with these on the back that we took off earlier. Make sure I get this the right way around. Is it that way around? There we go. Click that down and we'll press against it and lock it into place. Same for the other side. It's not necessarily the tidiest of installs here, but hey, we're doing what we can. Then, this is a clip exercise. This should just clip in kind of like this. Is it that simple? That was too easy. Everything's tucked away, hopefully not rattling away behind all of this. But that feels in. We're just going to work on the air conditioning vents next. Rewind, rewind, missed some clips. These definitely go in here. And then this one also. And then... There we go, that's better. Clicked, into place, no rattles. I need to give you guys an update. We've obviously pulled all of this back off because we need to do adjust some of the cables. Typical, I think, novice experience. But there's one thing that definitely can't be beaten, which we're gonna have to not finish for. And that's really frustrating, is because this, this piece has these bits that stick out at the edges and that does not line up with the cutout on the dashboard of the car. Like it doesn't at all. We, we need to basically cut out some pieces here. In fact, if I just get the light, sorry, it's really blinding. You can see here a little bit more how that just is never gonna fit. Oh, let me squeeze that down. Like it's, it's impossible. You, you can't do that. So it's gonna have to sit kind of bouncing around, but we can put all of this back together. We can reassemble the whole head unit and lower sections down here. And I can actually put this back in. There's nothing stopping this going back in because these cables will shuffle up into that corner. Um, out of the way. This plugs in here. Feels like a long time ago that we began with this earlier today. But in theory, if I can hold it maybe like this, see if I can get this back in. Yep, that clicked in very nicely. This should be able to sit here. I think it goes in at the bottom first. I need to make sure these cables are definitely out of the way. Yeah, they, they, that feels pretty good actually. How does this go? There we go. Click. And then there were four across the top. So that's in, that's nice, but you can see that that's not gonna happen today. Um, we're gonna make some progress putting this back together, putting the trim back on, and then we're basically gonna be ready. The last bit of trim, the dash Alcantara stripe. That could be from various different things. I'm pretty sure it was some kind of silvery metal look in my uh, old car but it's very nice in the Alcantara. Has that clicked in? Maybe, maybe not. Unsure, but I'm gonna walk around the outside because we now have the screen in the center of the dash, which from the outside looks really quite strange. I've gotta be honest, because it is obviously quite a large screen, although it's quite an unusual screen in the E82 to begin with, the way it has a weird curved shape to it. But obviously it's been a long, long day <laughs> to make some progress with this. We've got a bit of packing up to do as well afterwards though. Mission success then. This is all fully plugged in. I say success, we need to figure this out. We're gonna to need to figure out how to get that to sit flush, but it's not something we have the tools to do here. It needs a Dremel or something to go through the dash, which is a little bit nerve wracking to begin with. But what I can do is pop the key in, hit the start button. The car does run, I promise. Needs a little bit of work, of course, but this is now fully up and running. And if we, uh, where are we? Sorry, zoom in on the screen here to show you when it's loaded up. 
it says connected drive just while it's connecting. It takes a moment just to search and do whatever it's doing and think for a second. Um, but as soon as it is live and kicking, are we up, are we up? Come on, load the tiles. It does just take a moment. Then you get the uh, display screen, which looks really nice. You can obviously pop the car into reverse. And hopefully, yep, yeah, there we go. We get Brad behind, he's waving a little bit high, but he is there. <laughs> it's good to be able to have that. Um, and what else do we have back in this view? You do have navigation if you install the GSM and GPRS, uh, GPS, sorry, um, and 4G antennas. You've got weather, music, car info, bunch of things. You've got this dashboard view, which is kind of cool, like this. Shows you the revs and the speed, which is really cool. Although it doesn't have a clue where we are. That's quite funny. Wherever the barn district is. Not entirely sure, I might have to Google that one. There we go, I like that. And then back to home. Obviously this is like a tablet and you can go into settings and then you've got the full settings for changing it, left drive, right drive, all of that. Because on that last display, you might have noticed on the dashboard, it has things like the graphic there and the handbrake graphics, um, those function, which is quite nice as well. Uh, it even tells us how many litres of fuel we have. That's kind of cool. I like that. That's actually really cool. I wonder if you can change in the settings in case you had a bigger tank or something. But yeah, you get the point. This is working beautifully. We just need to get the installation finished, finalised, and uh, that will be mission success. Unless you do that kind of stuff for a living, don't start that type of project at three o'clock in the afternoon because it's now like 10 or 11 or something. I don't even know. Um, unless, of course, you're a professional. If you're a professional, you've probably done it in about two hours because you have experience with it. To be fair, I think we've actually done a really good job. The fact that that's in, it's working. Younger Tim would not have known what to do. I'm just absolutely shattered. It's been a very long day because prior to that, we had a lot going on here as well. It's been exhausting but hey updates with the 1m we're going to turn this car just like the clio v6 into something absolutely epic that thing is a monster to go out and drive it it is so much fun obviously we had a sound system upgrade in there we had a whole load of other things as well so continuing the theme keeping it quite oem not going too far away from oem but very much plus you know adding to it making it more usable making it even funner making it even more special and we've got some cool stuff in the works for the 1m over i guess it's going to be six months before it's done if we could say it will never be done a project car is never ever completely done let me wrap it up for there though big thanks to carly for sponsoring today's video if you're interested do check out the link down below and of course you can get 15 percent off with the discount code as well right now until the end of august but that's it for this time thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you again very soon cheers